Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon, and I apologize for us not being on sooner today. We didn't have any other videos up today, and the reason being that we had to put our uh, dear Stella, our kitty Stella, we had to put her to sleep this morning. She'd been uh, battling with uh, kitty cancer for several months now, and it just it was time to go. It was time to go, so we had to put her put her down. Yeah, because of this, Geeky's not going to be on the next video or two. She's taking it pretty hard. Uh, she's got a lot of uh, things she's working on right now, too. And, um, yeah, so R.I.P. Stella, we're going to miss you quite a bit. But we're going to talk about Star Wars in this video. We're going to talk about Star Wars, the rise of Skywalker. And we're going to talk about uh, some leaks that are coming out. We're going to talk about... Um, Carrie Fisher's brother revealing that Leia was going to be the last Jedi. She was going to be the last Jedi in The Rise of Skywalker before her untimely death. We're going to talk about how a new Star Wars tie-in novel explains, uh, you know, how the Resistance rebuilt itself and where Wedge Antilles was and a bunch of other things that should have happened, uh, probably happened on screen. So you're going to have to go buy that tie-in book if you want to know what the hell is going on with the rise of Skywalker, then we're going to talk about a potential spoiler. And I, I missed this one somehow that again, there was a, uh, a track listing for the rise of Skywalker, the soundtrack, and apparently a major plot point, a major plot point was spoiled by the soundtrack listing. This also happened with the Phantom Menace that teased Qui-Gon's death. Uh, by actually having, I think it was called Qui-Gon's Funeral, as one of the tracks. I think a couple of weeks before the movie was released, so that spoiled things for people. And then we're going to talk about, uh, you know, Bob Iger. Bob Iger, going back to this uh, uh, too much Star Wars uh, nonsense, too much Star Wars, uh, that Solo failed because there was too much of it. And I guess this is going to be the excuse he uses uh, as to why they're going to pull back on this uh, new trilogy by the Game of Thrones guys because they're out the door. Um, there's just too much Star Wars. We can't have any uh, any more Star Wars for a while because I think this movie is not going to do as well as they were hoping. So before we get into the video, before we get into this uh, Star Wars roundup, please subscribe if you haven't subscribed already and check and make sure if you're still subscribed. YouTube changed a bunch of stuff over the last couple weeks and uh, we're, we're finding out that a lot of our subs are getting unsubbed um people who have had notifications on are no longer getting notifications this is just more youtube uh nonsense uh more nonsense as they um tweak the system to what get rid of problematic channels i don't know maybe it's just a maybe it's just a system-wide glitch but make sure you guys are actually subbed to the channel so I guess the first thing we're going to talk about before talking about this uh, tie-in book, which is going to, to I guess, fill in some of the plot holes we're going to see in The Rise of Skywalker, is that according to Carrie Fisher's brother Todd, Carrie Fisher was supposed to be the last Jedi in The Rise of Skywalker. Now, I have no problem with Leia being a Jedi. In fact, in the Expanded Universe, she was a Jedi. But in The Force Awakens, she showed no indication at all that she had had any formal Jedi training. In The Last Jedi, she was sidelined for most of the movie, which is a real travesty considering that we no longer have Carrie Fisher and they, they had her sit out most of the movie in favor of Holdo. But the only Force power we saw from her was the inexplicable ability to fly through outer space instead of instantly freezing to death, as would happen to 99.9999% of people who have been blown into space. But this is Star Wars, right? Uh, suspension of disbelief, right? Suspension of disbelief. So Carrie Fisher's brother reveals that Leia was supposed to be the last Jedi, Coming from comicbook.com, Carrie Fisher completed filming Star Wars The Last Jedi before her passing, allowing the film to keep the role of Leia as it was originally intended, but the actress's brother Todd claims that one of the original intentions with Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker was to see Leia fully embrace her Jedi abilities to become the last Jedi of the Skywalker saga. 
In lieu of altering The Last Jedi to explain the character's absence from the upcoming sequel, J.J. Abrams was able to utilize unseen footage from The Force Awakens to reverse engineer in an organic way for those sequences to be incorporated into the new film. I have a feeling this is going to be done very, very badly. I think this is going to be done very badly. She was going to be the big payoff in the final film. She was going to be the last Jedi, so to speak. That's cool, right? Uh, Todd Fisher shared with Yahoo, People used to say to me, why is it that Carrie never gets a lightsaber and chops up some bad guys? Obi-Wan was in his prime when he was Carrie's age. It's unclear if the original plan would have included seeing Leia wield a lightsaber, but Fisher's comments confirm remarks made by Mark Hamill, who previously claimed Leia was supposed to be the key figure in the upcoming film. Would have been nice to have them both together. Uh, would have been nice to have them both together, wouldn't it? Uh, would have been. I know they're going to try and find a way to close her story in The Rise of Skywalker that gives her the respect she deserves because Han Solo was more prominent in The Force Awakens, Luke's a little more prominent in The Last Jedi, Leia was meant to be more prominent in The Rise of Skywalker. Uh, Fisher went on to explain that one reason he supported Abrams repurposing the unseen footage was due to the connection he had with the actress. The truth is that J.J. Abrams was great friends with Carrie. He had an extraordinary sense of love for her. They had eight minutes of footage. They grabbed every frame and analyzed it and then reverse engineered it and got it into the story the right way. It's kind of magical. I don't know. I think this sort of, sort of sounds like uh, Frankenstein, uh, a Frankenstein of a film. But we'll see. You know, who knows? He added, this is, in its own way, a payoff. It's Carrie talking to us all from beyond. The beautiful thing about the concept of the Force is that there is no real death. You just exist in another dimension. So Carrie is looking down or sideways or wherever and is still part of us to be able to see that. It's magical stuff only in the movies. Um, yeah, I'm, I have concerns. I gotta tell you, as amazing as it is going to be, uh, to see Carrie Fisher uh, one last time. Uh, I have concerns because I don't think since this was not filmed to be part of this movie that this is going to be done well. I think they're basically just shoehorning what they had left of Carrie Fisher into the movie. They had to write the movie around these eight minutes of footage. Again, uh, a lot of YouTubers making the comparison to Plan 9 from Outer Space with Bella Lugosi. And it, it, it's, it's not too dissimilar. I'm sorry, it's not too dissimilar. I'm not, I don't think this is gonna work. Uh, I could be wrong, but I don't think it's gonna work. But uh, yeah, speaking of things that don't work, speaking of things that don't work, let's talk about the state of the resistance at the beginning of the Rise of Skywalker, right? Because Ryan Johnson, after he uh, completely destroyed Luke Skywalker, after he had the main characters of the sequel trilogy cruise around in a giant circle and accomplish absolutely nothing uh, in this movie. They all literally, everybody winds up where they first started. The resistance is down to like 12 people. You know, I don't know how many resistance people are left, but they got like 12 or 15 people in the resistance. They can all fit on the Falcon. All right. So then we saw in the trailer, we saw a shit ton of ships. A shit ton of ships. Where did they come from? I don't know if the movie is going to explain it. I don't think the movie is going to explain where these, uh, where this uh, uh, new resistance came from. But we do know that Rose is going to have a bigger role. And they're going to explain her role, her promotion probably in this book. Uh, there is going to be a time jump. And they're just going to magically explain that, well, they went out and they recruited and they got some more people, I guess. Uh, there's a new book out called Resistance Reborn. Uh, they have to explain why the hell they have so many ships in the Rise of Skywalkers in the trailer, right? They're promoting the hell out of this book. And uh, here's one story from CNET. Whether you love or hate The Last Jedi, there's no denying it left the heroes of Star Wars in a dire situation. Yeah, most of them were dead. Uh, most of them were destroyed. Most of them had their integrity destroyed. The First Order slaughtered all but a few of the Resistance, leaving the survivors fleeing for their lives aboard the Millennium Falcon. That's where we meet them in author Rebecca Roanhorse's new novel, Resistance Reborn, which fills in some of the time between The Last Jedi and the upcoming Rise of Skywalker. That sounds like uh, some kind of event they would have in Portland, doesn't it? Resistance Reborn, uh, Saturday from 12 to 4. Bring your own beer. 
Uh, out November 5th, Roan Horse's first Star Wars book proves to be a well-written adventure, yada, yada. Um, they talk about how they're going to reintroduce Wedge Antilles. Again, they're not going to explain him. I don't think they're going to explain where Wedge fits into this movie. And they're already, they're already supposedly turning Finn and, and Rose into a platonic couple because they're going to set Finn up with this new girl that's going to be in the movie. Uh, so they, they, this is like the, it sounds to me like this book exists to just fill in all the plot holes that we're going to see in the rise of Skywalker. And I have to wonder how bad it actually, uh, how bad it actually is, you know, or are they just going to have this, this whole army of ships show up with no explanation? Um, are they going to have Rose and Finn not be a thing? not even mention what happened in the last movie probably because every one of these movies feels like they're completely disconnected from the previous film so yeah i think they're just gonna they're just gonna forget some of the stuff that happened two years ago but kelly marie tran is teasing rose tico's new role in the resistance of course you know she uh she still exists she still exists you know, we have to make sure people know that Rose did not disappear just because you're not going to see a new action figure of her because they can't sell the ones from the previous movie. When we last saw her, Rose was merely a mechanic. Yet the new film will see her being a commander in the organization, which provided a number of new experiences for the actress. Uh, Tran detailed to Digital Spy what it was like preparing for her character's promotion. Yeah, she's got a gun now. Um, she's got a gun. So... She got a promotion. I guess, you know, when you've only got 12 people left in your army, uh, it's pretty easy to get a promotion, right? Uh, whoever's left gets gets to move up the ranks. I don't know. So I, I really do think this book, and I, I hate that they do this. I hate that Lucasfilm does this. They did it to some extent with the prequels, but not to this extent. Not to the point where, like, you have to read the books or play the games or whatever just to know what the hell is actually going on in star wars with the prequels the books did fill in a lot of details like where did uh, count dooku come from and uh, grievous what's his story etc etc um but you could still watch those three movies and feel like they were pretty cohesive and your mind could kind of fill in the blanks you know this one i'm getting the vibe that they're just gonna have a whole bunch of ships a whole bunch of people in the resistance leia's gonna be a jedi um, we're going to have, you know, Rose is going to be promoted, uh, and all this craziness going on. And there's not going to be any explanation for it. I, I, I think they're just going to be like, yep, yep. We're just going to undo some of Ryan Johnson's, uh, try to undo some of Ryan Johnson's damage, right? Go buy the book. If you want to find out how this actually makes sense. Uh, God. Okay. So, so leaks, more leaks. This one does not surprise me at all. Um, in fact, I hadn't heard anything about it until I watched a video by Doomcock the other day talking about this leak. So somehow I missed this one. But if this is true, uh, that's it. Game over. So I'm just going to drop the spoiler if you guys haven't heard it already. Apparently, there is a track on the Rise of Skywalker soundtrack called The Falcon's Last Ride. Now, this is coming from Reddit. This is a supposed leak, but we are getting close to the release of this film. So I'm more inclined to believe leaks now than I would have been six months ago. The Falcon's last ride. Now, one of two things could happen. One of three things could happen. Maybe the Falcon runs out of gas, space gas. You know, it could happen. Maybe the Falcon parks it on Batu, since that's where the Falcon attraction is. And Disney wants this synergy, so they could just park the Falcon on Batu. And be like, come to the theme park after the movie, everybody. Uh, Disney would totally do that. Or the third option. The third option, which is probably the truest uh, option. Probably the most likely to happen. And if this happens, uh, if you weren't done with Star Wars before, you will absolutely be done with Star Wars uh, after this. The third option, of course, being that they blow the freaking Falcon up. Probably with Lando and Chewie on it right because we got to kill off everybody from the original trilogy we've already we've already killed off uh luke and han um you know we got to blow up chewy and lando and c-3po is gonna turn evil maybe we'll we'll kill him off too i've heard rumors that they're, they're gonna kill off 3po we know palpatine's gonna die and we know by the end of the movie 
if the rumors are true, and I'm inclined to believe they are because I've heard them from multiple sources, uh, Rey is going to usurp the Skywalker name. So everybody from the original trilogy that you cared about will probably be dead by the end of this movie, except for Leia, who's dead in real life, and uh, Rey is going to walk off with the Skywalker name. And that's how they're that's how they're going to end the Rise of Skywalker. That's how they're going to end the Star Wars saga. Um, and this is going to piss off so many people. Like, I, there there is not enough popcorn for the massive shit show that will take place online if they kill off a whole bunch of other original trilogy characters. If they blow up the Falcon. If they kill off Chewie. You know, I, I just I can't even imagine the backlash. I mean, you thought the the last Jedi was bad. I can't imagine the backlash. I hope this is not true. I hope it's not true. I hope the Falcon just runs out of gas. Uh, but at this point, as far as I'm concerned, Disney Star Wars is apocrypha. George Lucas did not give his blessing to this trilogy. This is not what he had in mind. Uh, so as far as I'm concerned, it's it's big budget fan fiction. And uh, you can create your own Star Wars story in your mind if you feel like the Star Wars saga has to continue beyond Episode Six. Personally, I'm good with six films. I am completely good with six films. So we might not be getting any more Star Wars for a while. <laughs> you know, obviously because the Game of Thrones guys either quit or got fired. Depends on who you asked. And uh, Bob Iger's like, less is more. You know, he always tries to put a positive spin on things. This is Bob Iger. I've said publicly that I think we made and released too many Star Wars films over a short period of time. Bullshit. Uh, you, you, you released one, well, one and a half shitty films, which completely destroy the franchise, and then you let your people go out there and attack the fandom. And it was uh, yub nub for the franchise after that. He talked to Gizmodo. Why would you talk? Why would anybody talk to Gizmodo? Voluntarily. Why would you talk to Gizmodo? I have not said that they were disappointing in any way. No, the films are fine. I've not said that I'm disappointed in their performance. I just think that there's something so special about a Star Wars film, and less is more. You mean you can't turn it into Marvel, Bob? Uh, did you realize that when you bought it, when you paid $4 billion for Star Wars, that you couldn't make you know 15 Star Wars movies a year? You're just going to make a shit ton of Star Wars shows on Disney+. Plus. Uh, Star Wars goes direct to TV after this. So, yeah, they're already starting with the excuses. And that'll be the excuse, you know, right? If, if this movie fails, if The Rise of Skywalker fails, it'll be like, well, it was too soon after Solo. It was too soon after The Mandalorian. This, this came out uh, a month after The Mandalorian. And it must have been that since people are getting Star Wars for $6.99 a month, they're not going to go to the movie theater to see another Star Wars movie. Uh, they will never blame themselves for a subpar product. They will do everything but blame themselves for a subpar product. And uh, that will be Disney's undoing in regards to Star Wars. So I have no idea where the franchise is going to go after this. I think a lot of people have just run out of give a shit at this point. So uh, we will see. But yeah, there you go, guys. Go, uh, go pick this book up. You can find out who Finn is crushing on. I don't think Finn and Poe are getting together. And uh, we can count down the days until the complete annihilation of the Star Wars brand at Disney's hand. In my opinion. Talk later. Hey guys, thanks for watching Clownfish TV. Please consider supporting the channel. Go to clownfishsupport.com. That's clownfishsupport.com. And if you want to join our community, go to clownfishtalk.com. That's clownfishtalk.com. Please subscribe. Ring the bell for notifications. We will talk to you next time.